Apple II compatible, wire-by-wire -wire build. The control lines. I'm Dr. Matt Regan. All right, so we're getting into the home straight before we can do our first bring up. So let's focus back on the 6502 microprocessor and see what still needs to be connected. First though, we have to look at what we've connected so far. VDD and VSS, which are the five volt and ground supply respectively, were connected first. Next, the data bus was connected, and then the address bus. NC just means not connected, so we can ignore that. And if you remember back to the introduction video, there are a couple of clock signals that we don't need to use. Okay, that's helped, but there are still 11 signals left. Let's look at what the Western Digital 65CO2 datasheet has to say about these signals. Any outputs that we don't need, we can just leave disconnected. The memory lock output may be used to ensure the integrity of read, modify, write instructions in a multiprocessor system, so we don't need that. Synchronize with opcode fetch. The opcode fetch cycle of the microprocessor instruction is indicated with sync high. Sync output is provided to identify those cycles during which the microprocessor is fetching an opcode. We store our program data and our instructions in the same memory, so we don't really care about this. I'm not sure why we really need this in an 8-bit system, but if anyone knows, put it in the comments below. Vector pull is another output used if you want to get fancy with interrupts. We're not going to do that, so we don't need that. Let's see how we're going with all these control signals now. Alright, that helps. Let's keep going. We can leave unused outputs disconnected, but we can't do that for unused inputs. We can't just leave them floating. Interrupt request. The interrupt request input signal is used to request that an interrupt sequence be initiated. Non-maskable interrupt. A negative transition on the non-maskable interrupt input initiates an interrupt sequence after the current instruction is completed. We're not using interrupt request or the non-maskable interrupt line at this stage, so we can just tie them to 5 volts through a resistor. Set overflow. A negative transition on the set overflow pin sets the overflow bit in the status code register. I'm not really sure why you would want to use the set overflow signal, maybe as an additional input. But for now, let's just tie it high. And again, remember that I use the terms high, 5 volts, and logical 1 interchangeably. Ready. A low input logic level on ready will halt the microprocessor in its current state. Returning ready to the high state allows the microprocessor to continue operation following the next phi negative transition. The ready signal is a bit more complicated, and we'll want to use it later to slow the CPU to talk to the Arduino. So we'll just tie it to 5 volts for now, but we'll need to come back to this one. These little squiggly lines are resistors. They're used for electrical purposes, but the signal at the pin is still 5 volts. And the reason we do this is that connecting inputs like these directly to 5 volts can damage some chips. Now we're down to the final four signals, and these are all inputs. Bus enable. The bus enable input signal provides external control of the address, data, and read write bar buffers. When bus enable is high, the address, data, and read write bar buffers are active. When BE is low, these buffers are set to the high impedance or floating status. Bus enable or BE will need, particularly when the video circuit wants to access the memory. Phase 2 in, or Phi 2, is the system clock. Remember the metronome from the introduction video. The read write bar output is used to control data transfer, and it's the same signal I discussed in the introduction video. And finally, reset. Anybody who's used a computer knows what reset does. So for now, we'll just tie all these four signals high and connect them to the Arduino. All right, let's build it.
So just a few more tasks before finishing. First, I have to connect up all the remaining power and ground signals. I need to connect A16 of the RAM to ground. A16, 17 and 18 of the ROM need to be grounded. I need to put in some temporary control wires during bring up. The RAM has a second chip select signal and that needs to be pulled up through a resistor to 5 volts. And finally, I need to wire in a reset switch. Press the notification bell to be informed when the new videos are available. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next video.